should be live. Can you see? Find it? I hope I am live. It's <laughs> <laughs> always a question mark. <laughs> Let's see if we're live. Yes, we are live. Okay. So, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to the Alilon Unplugged number six. Now tonight is very, very, very special. Um, we have a room full of people who specifically came to see this amazing man. Um, Chris is, well for me, is a legend. Um, somebody that I aspired to be when I was a kid. Somebody who I used to watch over and over and over and over again. This is Christopher Brooker. Um, Christopher Brooker is now a friend, which I'm honoured to say. And he was um, kind enough to come and spend some time with us and some time with you guys and uh, showing you and telling you some stories and sharing his dreams and his passion with you guys. So I'm going to be watching. Oh, let me see if it's paused. It's paused. Can, can you guys see it? Can you guys see it? Yeah. Can you see me talking and waving? Yeah. Okay, mine stopped. All right, so well, I'm going to pass it over to Christopher. Christopher. So we've got to thank you for coming. Okay. Johnny, thank you. Guys, ask questions. Thank you very much for, uh, for asking me. And our audience can ask questions as we go through. Uh, my name's Christopher Brooker, and we'll talk about that in a, in a little, in a few moments after we get our model started here. Uh, this, is, this is my mod model, Melody. That's Melody, not Melody, Melody. And um, I, I always like to see my client um, first, uh, without the gown, um, just as they come, to, to, you know, to, to, to get a good idea. I, can you stand up, Melody? Of so, this is really very important. Generally, the client comes towards me and, you know, goes down to the chair. So, I, I take everything into consideration because you can do the best haircut in the world, but if it doesn't suit the whole person, you know, they can go up looking like the back of a bus. So it's very, very important that, you know, you do a haircut that relates um, not only to the face, but to the whole person. Mm. So this, that's Melody, take a seat, honey. I'm going to, I wanted to show you something quite interesting tonight. Um, you know, you, these days you see all kind of free handing techniques and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but actually what I wanted to show you tonight was a fundamental technique which um, we're going to call Mia because um, this was the technique that I used on the original Mia cut, Mia Farrow cut, um, that was the same cut um, that was done later by Roger Thompson um, that was used on the film Rosemary's Baby at, at the time. It was um, it was, a, it was a very radical thing at the time because particularly at that great company that I used to work with, um, Vidal Sassoon, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't work with anybody now. I'm not associated with anything. So I hope that everything I say to you tonight, you, you know there's no material gain for me or anything like that. Um, and it, hopefully it'd be more believable to you. Um, but it was very, very radical because what I, I won't go into the whole story of actually how this happened, but, but Mia Farrow at that time, um, it was in the 60s when television was, get, was becoming international, well, had become international. She had been in this series at the time called Peyton Place, and the Vietnam War had started, and she she was very rebellious. Um, that was my impression when I met her. Um, and what had happened was that her hair had been all hacked off. She'd had this long hair for the series. And um, her hair had all been hacked off. Um, I learned very soon after the haircut that she was going to do this Roman Polanski film, Rosemary's Baby, um, which I didn't know at the time. And I was, I was asked to go and sort out Mia Farrow's hair. And I, you know, I did the colour. It's not my speciality by any means. But, but Annie Humphreys and, and Claire Hamilton 
um, told me what I, what I should do, and I did the did the colour, and I did the cut. But I'm going to show you the cut tonight um, that I did there, which is one of the <coughs> fundamental haircuts of, of you know in hair cutting. Okay, it's it's a very very important cut. It it um, I'm going to explain this um, whilst Melody's going to be shampooed um, on, on on the blackboard before we start. This is a technical evening, and I am going to really be trying to explain the technique because I, I believe that you know it is serious hair, hair cutters and hair designers out there that that will be watching this. And it will be of interest, I hope, to barbers as well as um, as cutters who, who do ladies' hair. Um, really, I had an idea to do something other than this for for the video when 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 Johnny asked me. Um, but then when I saw the picture of, of Melody, I thought, well, you know, she even looks like Nina Farrow. I mean, you chance. know, I mean. And, uh, <laughs> It, 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 it's so. So this is also one of the things you've got to. Everybody has to take into consideration. Um, the most important thing is that you need to be able to work with every client that comes into the salon and know, and and know the techniques and things that you should be doing. That and you, you increase your repertoire. This is one of the haircuts that everybody has to know and how to do properly. And whether you're a ladies' hair cutter. Or, or, a, or a barber, as I say. So we'll, we'll, um, we've got a little bit of old colour on the ends. Um, perhaps, you know, in an ideal uh, salon situation, um, I, I, I might have um, liked to have just gone through the colour a little bit um, because I am going to be taking a lot of these ends off. Uh, when, when I cut it, but I would I would have liked to have blended it blended it through, which also would give her a little bit more body and and help the hair to be either smooth or messy or, or what have you. Just give it a little bit more body and precise. That's what I would have done normally. But so I told you my procedure: see the client first without a gown on or his gown on, get a good idea, and then with just one light shampoo, just a bit bit of conditioning on on the ends, Tom. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm going to, um, gonna, on the backboard, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Okay. Now, if you'd like to go with Tom, and you can put the camera on and take care of that. So I go over here. Now, I, most, a lot of people out there, they, they don't know who I am. Um, but I, I am not, I, I don't count myself as a professional hair designer anymore. I don't. You know, this is not what I do. I stopped. We do. <laughs> I stopped, okay. But the, but the thing is, it's, it's, it's part of your DNA when you've done it for 30 years. And, um, you know, you, you just, for me, I mean, you just, you, you never stop. So, um, so, you know, I hope you bear with me tonight because, um, you know, it's a bit like probably an old, an old Wimbledon tennis player or something. And you see Nastasi or one of these guys, McEnroe, come back, and you know, and they can still knock the ball about. They're not what they were, but you know, they're still interesting to watch and what have you. And people had their favourites, and and maybe um, maybe some of them know things that other people don't. Chris, the feedback here, you've got so many hellos, so yeah. many. We're right, with the screen. To speaking to you, yeah. Christopher, wow, well, amazing. I, I you know, so. give you my love, but if, for the people that don't know me, I'm told that on the internet, if you look under Pinterest, Christopher Brooker, etc., etc., hair design, that it'll come up with some of the hair cuts and designs that I did. Um, but, you know, there were many more that I did, which I probably are lost now. I didn't keep any of that. I don't... I don't look, like looking backwards, and and you know, I don't believe in the good old days. I mean, I I, I I'm just not like that. Um, so, you know, if for the people that don't know my work, they can see some of it on the on, on the internet, and there are some very very interesting concepts there 
which I'd like you to look at and think about why I did them and, and that kind of thing. Maybe we meet again and I can explain. Um, but so so pin, what we're going to do here, what we're going to do here tonight is with the Mia cup. Okay, it's a very similar. Um, yeah, first of all, um, there's difference between graduation and layering. Okay, graduation is the building up of weight uh, within a shape, like a graduated bob or something like that. Okay, layering is taking the weight out of the shape and making a three-dimensional shape. This was one of the first three-dimensional shapes that was created. It's crazy, I mean, um, you know, but it, it, it was. Um, I'm not saying the Mia cut was, but at this time, Roger and I did the Greek goddess, which was the first time the hair had ever been permed and left to dry naturally. It's, it's ridiculous to say this, you know, but it's true. I mean, um, this haircut is not exactly the same as the Greek goddess, but there are similarities. And also, there are things about it which, which were mine, that, you know, that I did about this. The, the fundamental shape of this Mia cup is a square, based on a square shape. Now, okay, if the hair is all expanded out, like this, put this in the face, it's a square with the corners knocked off, basically. That's what this is fundamentally going to be like, okay? Now, I have the belief that when you see, like, drawings and what have you of men or, you know, or sculptors or, and women, men are generally much more angular in, in the, not just their bodies and things like that. Everything about them in the symbiology is more angular. And with women, it is more rounded, okay? Um, it's very, very interesting this. You can look at anything to do with that. If you, you know, go to any gallery or anything and, and that. I took this on board, but this was the beginning. This was the beginning of layered hair, which I'm showing you. And it's still really so important today. So there is value in this haircut for barbers as well as ladies, because a lot of barbers don't use the techniques which I'm going to show you today, and they were a bit better if they did. I mean, it's a very radical thing to say because there's some very good barbers out there. But, you know, um, but fundamentally, uh, what I'm going to show you is this square shape for a, for a lady, but there are certain techniques about it which you could use when cutting men's hair. I mean, on most men's hair, you will use these square graduated techniques. Now, Okay, how, how do we get a square layering in the hair? How do we do that? Let's just do, and well, let's do it on this, right? If you can imagine now, I haven't expanded it. Okay, and down the back, right down the back, right? The, the, the Sassoon still use fundamentally these ideas, but some of the refinements of this idea which I'm showing you now, they don't use. Okay, this is interesting. You know, going right back, there is nobody that left there. Now, I, I am the last of the Mohicans. There is nobody left there who worked with Vidal and, and saw, you know, what, how he did this. So, you know, um, a bob, for example. Um, you know, it's not just a straight line, if you can cut a straight line with it go, without it going up over the years. He used techniques which are forgotten now, actually. You know, it, it, it's a terrible thing. Those techniques, they should be, they, they should be remembered. In, and, I mean, he could cut a bob so it would turn under on its own. It wasn't something that was on the internet that somebody, you know, with Photoshop has tidied up the line. 
it, it, you know, this was done with a pair of scissors. And, and it, the hair, whether it be Swedish, fine, you know, straight hair or whatever, it could turn under. I mean, you know, amazing through technique. And, and so th that's why these kind of techniques are quite important. So to build this, 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 this squareness, we've got the, the line right up the back, which I'm going to show you, and fundamentally in three sections. Now they call it ABC. It's the same as what, 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 what we did then, but with a bit of a difference. Okay, so this, just say this area is A, this area B is B, and this area is C. Okay, now I'm going to go to the profile. Okay, just, just a quick profile. We won't worry too much about what have you. Um, so now, in the A, B, and C, you've got, the, you've got the same thing also in the sides as well. You've got A, you've got B, and you've got C. The same thing in the sides. But when we're looking at the back here, this is the, this is the important bit, right? The hair is pulled down in the A section at 45 degrees and over-directed towards the, the section towards the middle every time. So you're walking your fingers across the head from the middle to the outside. So, so you cut the first line, then you take the second one to it, and the third to the second, and so on. Okay, and you do that in every section. The, the B section is straight out. Okay, it's straight out. And then the C section is down, it's very slightly at an angle of 45 degrees. And you cut through, or you cut through, like that. Okay, the angle you want. Now, the thing is, why you do these 45 angles and the, the 90 is because some people have got jumpy crowns and things like that. So it gives you a little bit of safety here. It, you don't cut it too short right away. You just don't whack right up through it. You build your shape through like that, always to the middle, all right? And you work the way through the sections. That's fundamentally how the back and the sides are going to be done. The same thing, if I turn this around, like now you imagine we got her, her ears on the side here, right? So the A section is, is 45, the B and the C, like that, 45, 90, 45, and cut in like that. Afterwards, in the final stages of the haircut, we're going to be rounding off the corners, all right? The same thing with the top of the head. The same thing with the top of the head I'm going to be showing you on the haircut in a moment. Okay, but on the top of the head, we've got the same thing with the three sections. And this, this section here is very, very slightly over-directed um, backwards there. And this one here is out. And then this here is very, very slightly over-directed forward. So, so let me show you. It's a bit hard to show you here. You, you, I'll show you on the, on the head. I said backwards, but actually I meant forward. This is going to be like 45, straight up. 90, this is coming up. And then this at 45. So you've got that. And then afterwards, you can go in and you can, you can round off. You must always cross-check every area. Now, now I, I've given you the detail like this. I don't want you to get hung up about this because it can, be, it can become too technical, all right? As well as having good technique, you need to have good feeling as well. Do, do you know what I mean by feeling? Do, do, do you know what feeling, what's feeling? Your instinct, maybe? Instinct, yes, it could be. Give me an example of feeling. Um, or a taste level. Taste level? Mm hmm. Mm, perhaps it could maybe. be something. So feeling can be a great musician. You, you hear. You, you hear a wonderful musician, you know, and it, he puts or she puts something of herself into that work of art. You know, I believe the hair design is 
it, it can be a work of art and a science. It can be everything, just, just, just like anything else. Okay, but you do need, you need a good foundation to work with. So first of all, you, 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 you need to understand technique and then you need to put your feeling to that. Your feeling is making your client look the very best that, she, that you can make her look. Going the extra mile to, to, to do a wonderful haircut, a wonderful colour, uh, and that kind of thing. So, okay, um, I hope I explained that. I, I, let's go over now to Melody. Brilliant. We're, we're yeah. So you've had loads and loads and loads of people joining in. Okay, uh, Loads of hellos. Um, and some, someone just now um, has been sharing it all around the world. So people from Asia joining in, people from Australia, people from uh, South Africa, people from the UK. And we've got a few questions here um, to ask you. The first one would be, to be specific, because people are joining in, obviously, halfway through. Yeah. They've missed certain bits in the beginning. Yeah. So before we start, just to quickly recap, yeah. what kind of thing, what kind of shape are you going to be executing? Where are you going to start? And I, how, how, how are you going to work your choice of length? I'm doing, I'm, um, I'm, I'm doing a mere cut, which is, which is, I prefer my cuts to have names like that. And if I say a mere cut, uh, it's Mia Farrow, um, which people remember, you know, the, the cut that I did. Um, it, it is a short basic cut, and it is an example of, of square layering. It is a fundamental haircut um, that, everybody should have, that everybody should understand. It's a short haircut. Um, it's, it, is, it is vital to understand it for, for both ladies' hair, hair cutting and for men's, I would say that, okay? Because even if you use clippers, you know, to do a lot of men's work, um, when, you're doing, when you're actually doing the layering of the cut, you should bear in mind what, what I'm going, going on about. So you can you can combine it with your with your clipper work. I prefer you can't use scissors and comb for everything, but I prefer as much as possible um, to work with 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 scissors and comb. That that that's that's my per, per, personal thing. So the first section, the first section here. Where is my my lovely assistant? Is she around? Yeah. Okay. So. It, it will help me, thank you. Oh, it's Tom. All right, I thought it was going to be a young lady. So, excuse me. So, so right, we start, right, now I am thinking, I am thinking for, for, for Melody, you know, what her face is. I'm starting in the back. We did start, you know, doing, doing that there, but, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the whole person. You've got to, you've got to keep in mind the big picture, all the... All the time now. Now look, I told you on the blackboard just now, like hold the hair down at a slight angle. Okay, I, I told you that, but don't get don't get too worried about that. Okay, and also when you're working, Tom, great. When you're working, um, just let me see here. Excuse me a second. Don't try to perfect it too much as you go through, right? Get the feeling going right first, and then go back and detail, all right? So, you know, that's, that's quite important. If, you know, if, if, you, if you're struggling on every angle and you're saying, oh, what did he say? You know, I've got to hold this at 45 and do this at 90, and it'll drive you mad. Don't, don't do that. But just bear, just bear it in mind, and, and, the, and the technique will come. If you... If you can understand it in your mind, then it'll come to you. The, the beauty of, this, of, the, of these haircuts is that you are cutting between your fingers, through your fingers or between your fingers, and, and then the, the individuality um, you know, of, for the client, just it begins to appear. Everything, everybody is unique. I find this you know, one of the sexiest parts of the human anatomy, 
you know, um, when you look at beautiful graduation in the back and the nape and stuff like that. Um, so look, I've gone through, I've just roughly gone through the, the, the first section, the A section. I'm going now to the middle section. It's very, very simple. The one thing I did men didn't mention, which I should have done, is that when the part, say the parting, just to separate the hair out in the first place, is put in, come right the way back to where the crown is, right? Do not go short. I, I see, I've always seen everybody stopping too early here, and it is totally the wrong proportion. You can get, you can get height and volume and what have you going forward as well as you can go at getting, going back. But if you stop too early here and you bring this hair back, the line is, is wrong for the client. Okay, so that's really very important. So, right, so we're now on the middle section and I'm just kind of drafting out, see, really changing this haircut quite a lot because I'm taking quite a lot of that interior weight out. And I see by walking my fingers across from the center like this to towards the ear, I'm cutting a square of shape in the back. Okay, if I was doing it in the other way round, like when I put in round graduation, like on the firefly or something like that, I go the other way. Okay, and you know, perhaps on another occasion we can discuss that. Chris, can I ask you a question? Yes, yes. So, before you talked about, for example, the choice of length in the back, um, you talked about that being the kind of sexiest area of the, the head. Yeah. Sitting, how the graduation sits. Yeah. Now, I'm coming, sorry to interrupt you, Johnny, no I'm not going to interrupt no, you no, for please. a second, but I want to get this here. I come in to just behind the ear. Okay, so, you know, I'm, I'm working flat in the back. So now I just come over to just to that area and now I'm in the A section of the side, just coming in there so the hair is slightly pulled down and then and now I'm looking I'm looking at the individual way that Melody's hair is is growing here. And uniquely for Melody, I just I just go in with a little bit of scissor over comb. Just I tell you, um, this was a very last minute thing. Um, Johnny asked me to do this, you know, a couple of days. And I, I didn't even have my scissors with me. I mean, um, and he's very kindly lent me these beautiful scissors, um, which you can get here at his, at his shop. Um, and I tell you, they're really impressive. Scissors. Um, I, w I would say wherever you are, that to invest in the best, in the best quality scissors that you can get, it, it, you know, it, it'll pay dividends for you. So I'm sorry I interrupted you. No John. problem. No problem. So, the, the, so, good question. Obviously, in this kind of scenario, there's certain things people need to be mindful of. And you talked about the parting and working towards the crown. What other danger areas do you find when you're teaching people, when you, when you use to people? What kind of tips can you give people to be careful of the danger areas in the head? Well, well, for example, we, <laughs> Johnny, I think, well knows, he, um, because he's asked that question just at the right moment. This thing about holding the hair slightly down when you come into the C-section um, here, because you can get jumpy crowns and, and, that, and, and that kind of thing. And, of course, once it's gone, it's gone. You, you know, so, so this does give you a little bit of safety uh, when you come up to um, the, cr the crown area. Um, it, it, it's, it's, a it's, a really, it's a lovely cut, this. It's, um, it, you know, it's always, it was always one of my, my favorite um, cuts. Because, you know, in the early days at Sassoon's, you know, when, when we were doing the, the geometrics and, and things like that, 
they, to me, I mean, I've, I'm not, it's, this is no way a criticism, because these were some of the best designs have ever been seen in hair, I think, but they were very two-dimensional. And, and so with, with the advent of cuts, well, particularly like this, um, that now, you see, we, we're looking, we're looking at the head. I, I, what I love about hair cutting is that, I, you know, I, get, I still get excited about this because as you do it, you know, Melody's hair shape and, and the whole thing is just coming alive. If you look at one side, and of course, when you're doing a cut in front of the mirror, use the mirrors. I didn't mention that. I mean, we're doing the back at the moment. But when we start working with the front and what have you, the mirror is a very important tool when you're cutting. Okay, and the thing is that the client can see it as well. She looks at the half that you cut and what it does for her face and everything like that. Um, you know, it's a very good vibe. I mean, it's really, it, it, it's, it's really great. Little techniques, like I'm not gonna show you a lot of different um, techniques, but this, this technique, which I'm showing you now, pointing. Okay, um, Vidal showed me this technique. Um, he said to me that Raymond, who taught him, could do whole haircuts just using pointing. Um, you know, it would be great to get you standing up here and doing some pointing. It's not quite as easy as it looks. If you do it right, you, 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 you can't cut the client by doing it. It's a wrist movement. You have to keep the elbow high. And you can just break down the line a little bit like that. The thought of Raymond, he was like the father of uh, a British hair cutting, really. I mean, and uh, Vidal, I think, learned so much from him. And, um, you know, it, it's great to have a technique like that. Now, what we could just do here, just, I am going to go all the way through this, but you can see already, you know, the, the difference. Um, it, it's great getting rid of the, some of the old colour as well. And I will go through, I will properly go through and cross-check, but you see already the shape has changed completely. And so I cross-check. Always, always cross-check your work. Okay, I will go through the whole back when it's done, but at the moment I'm just drafting it out. Okay, so now I'm going to go. Ask you a question? Yes, sure, John. Just, uh, you just mentioned uh, cross checking. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when we have different people in the academy, one of the things that we focus on is the fact that people have this tendency to cross cut rather than cross check. Would you be able to help people understand what that means and how it works? And okay, so when you say cross cut instead of cross check, um, to me, cross-checking is you cut it one way, you check it the other. You know, it's not, it's not rocket science. Um, keep, it, keep it simple. Um, you know, don't, don't let's play with, with words too much. Um, just, you know, if, when you cut one way, do it the other way. Now, I will say to you, that for many, many years now, the fundamental way that I cut most laid haircuts is with round graduation, but that would be from another time. But this technique, which I'm showing you, as I say, you know, has very, very wide application. So now, see, that was cut very, very square before, and now working forward from the ear and always, you see, by, by working like this, I am throwing the weight forward so it becomes square. Okay, just let the hair, just let it fall down. Don't worry about these little wispy bits down here. We're going to fit them in in a moment. Don't worry about it. Just build your shape and then, fit, and then fill in around the edges like I did in the bottom afterwards, okay? And instead of you know, having this weight down on Melody's face. So now, 
we've got this very, very nice soft edge here, which I want to keep really quite soft, and I'm not going to take it in too tight to begin with. I'm not going to take it in tight at all because it depends what's going to happen with the front. I'm just strengthening it up. Now, you know, ladies have got finer hands than, than I have, and they may, and they can probably get in much tighter than I can around the ears. But what I tend to do is I do my layering, as I've just shown you, and then I go in, as I did in the back, and I just go in tighter with the scissor over comb. Now, that's, th this is quite an important um, little point as well. So, so that you don't get a very heavy line on the face or around the ears or in the nape of the neck, okay, just cut that as I just showed you, almost like freehand. And then, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go back towards the line. Not putting too much pressure on it, but go back towards the line and clean it up. Then when the hair falls naturally, you've got a, uh, you've got a graduated edge on that line. That makes it, ha that makes it stay, stay as it should. And the same thing goes or around, this goes with men's hair, with anything. Once you cut your line, over direct the hair towards the line, okay, and very, very gently just clean up that line. And then we, we can take a bit more weight out of that, but it's beginning to happen. It's beginning to happen now. See, look, you know, you, you just look here, and it's just, it, it, it's, it's fitting, it's contouring the face. You know, look, just look at the face, you know, um, in, in the mirror. I mean, it, you know, you're, you're building up a lovely shape. So we, what we've done here is really, I've, I took the A and the B almost together. Don't worry about, don't worry about that too much. We're just taking in the last part of the side part here. Please can I ask you a question? Yes. Okay, so we've got a question here from a young man called... Damien Botha, and yeah. it says, are you taking diagonal forward sections when you're cutting the sides? Okay, I, what I'm doing here is my sections, as I showed you on the drawing, are not really so much diagonal. They're very up and down, and my fingers, the first cut, you cut the first cut, you take the second section towards it, very, very square, very, very flat and square through here. So they're not diagonal sections. If, if they were diagonal, um, it would create a very, very different effect. I'm, I'm taking weight out of the hair. You can see, as I'm actually cutting here, I'm, I'm taking really quite a lot of the, you know, even though I haven't even got to the top yet, I'm, I'm taking really a lot out of that. Now, I'm very careful not, not to overdo it because I want to, that's how I do, that's how I do that. You can see the shape. Now I'll go in and do the other side and then we fit the top in to the sides. All right? Because there's a young lady yeah. called Elizabeth I, Baylor. Yeah, I do hope I do hope that that answered that guy's question yeah. just just now. I, yeah, I really did. hope I did. Yeah, yeah, the um, answer was oh, oh, sorry, Can they hold, just hold the yeah. hair for me, please? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. What's that, John? So we've got um, a young lady called Elizabeth Baber, and her comment is: Christopher Booker taught me pretty much everything I know about hair cutting back in the late seventies and very early eighties. I'm so glad to see him. He is sharing his talent again. And if I was there, if I was, bear with me, I just jumped. If I was in the UK, I'd see, I'd see there to see him in a heartbeat. He be, should be here to see in a heartbeat. And also we've got uh, Richard Asforth, who's a, an amazing hair cutter and a very good friend. 
and he said, amazing to see this guy. It's like being back in staff training again. <laughs> well, I don't want to do that to you, you know, but, um, but it, it is good to, um, to remind, be reminded because, I mean, you know, we all like to, to cut very freely, um, but it, it, it's very, very important, I think, to have techniques that can be shared um, because even a lot of very, very good haircutters, they, you know, they, 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 they forget this stuff. I mean, it's, I think it's really very important. So I'm, I'm cutting the, this B section now, over, direct, over directing back every time. And as I come up into the B section, the hair is pulled more out, okay? Now we're coming up higher towards, towards the crown. I've still got a bit more to, to take in there. This, this is another very interesting thing about hair cutting. Of course, you can't cut exactly the same on both sides. You have to vary your technique because when you're cutting this way, you're cutting over the fingers. When you're cutting this way, you're cutting through. But I would say to you, another very fundamental, if you want to have really good technique, then try as much as possible to always cut from short to long with any cut that you're doing, as much as possible. Um, you know, it, it, this is the same for, for anything. You, you can... You can be the top in your salon, and um, you know, and 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 be busy and successful and all that. But if you really want to be, you know, excel, then you've got to constantly try to improve your technique, and it takes a lifetime to do that. So, you know, uh, yeah, this is this is coming. Nicely. See, I let the hair fall away here, and then, and then I know what to do. She, she has a little jumpy hairline a little bit. I don't mind that. I don't mind jumpies. Chris, I've got another yeah. question here. Yes. It says, can you explain how is Chris over-directing each section? Yeah. Is it always over-directed back to the previous? This is a square graduate. This is a square graduated haircut, and and my fingers are going from from the middle, one section at a time, walking across, so that the second section is pulled to the first, the third to the second. As I walk, it's being cut really quite flat through here, but on a, on a slight angle in towards the nape of the neck there leaving a little, little bit of safety. I'm watching the crown now as so I just come up to here. Um, it, she's a little flatter on, on, on her crown on one side than she is on the other. Nothing wrong with that. There's nobody. Now look, just look at the difference in, you know, in what, what we're doing here. I mean, this is, this is not something that is faked on Photoshop, it's what you see is what you get. <laughs> it's, uh, it drives me mad now because you don't know if what you're looking at is real, but this is actually, this is actually really being done here. So. so if anyone in the room has got questions, if anybody online would like to ask Christopher a question, I'm just please coming feel free to ask. Tighter. I'm just getting in a little tighter in behind the ears. She's got beautiful ears, they don't stick out too much or anything like that. Um, I, I don't mind sticky out ears, um, but she's got perfect ears for this sort of cut, so it's, it's no difficulty. A little bit of scissor over comb, let the hair fall down, and then working, like I said, from short to long, don't go too tight. You can always take a little bit more off. Okay, let the hair fall, let the hair fall, go back without any tension, just, just clean the line, 
There's a little bit too much weight in there behind the ears. So particularly in the lower levels, Okay. So you're, you're using Cesar Vacamacris as um, sorry. You're using Cesar Vacamacris almost like a cross check. Cross -check well, it thing. is. It what well, I was then. I, I not not putting any any kind of um, pressure on the hair. I mean, I could do I could do really wonderful uh, adaptions of this haircut, which which literally you've never seen before. But it, this, is the, this is the foundation that, that, that you could learn, you know. But, but, you know, people say to me, well, you know, there's nothing new in here, you can't do. I mean, mm -hmm. I absolutely disagree with that. I absolutely disagree with that because I could, you know, I could adapt this haircut and, 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 and take it on. It would be, it, it would be so exciting. Um, but this is exciting too. So could you give the guys maybe some Cesarvacom tips? How to control Cesarvacom? Okay. Well, I, I, I do believe that probably most people who, who are spending their evening, um, you know, watching this, I, I, I believe that, you know, that they've probably been through beauty school or, or what have you, and they should, and, the, and the, I'm sure that they, most people know about Cesarvacom. It's a technique that I like very much, and, and, and fundamentally, um, well, if, if I was doing a, you know, a, a proper scissor over comb, I approach it in three sections again, but instead of three, vertic three vertical sections, three horizontal sections, okay, and the, and the, trick, the trick about scissor over comb or using the clippers with a comb um, and, you know, cutting the hair in that sort of way is to move the, comb, move the comb all the time when you're working. Don't stop. Don't stop. You just got you just got to go through. You see, even cutting between my fingers like I've just done, then sometimes as well when I'm going through, see even though there's hardly anything, it's literally polishing at this stage. Got another couple of questions yeah. here for you, Chris. Chris, Chris. Um, so question number one yeah. is actually a question plus a statement. Yeah. It's from Tony Sadiq. He says, please ask Christopher, will he write his autobiography? Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> I, you know, um, yeah. I, I don't think so. I mean, this gives me nightmares to <laughs> to, do, to do this tonight. I mean, um, you know, um, I, I, I actually I actually don't like going backwards. I'm I'm always I'm always looking forwards. Um, you, you know, it's it, it is very it is was a very interesting story. I mean, my my, my experience working with all those fantastic people. Um, you know, but um, I don't know. I mean, um, so maybe it might happen. Well, we'll yeah. I mean, I doubt it. I doubt oh, it. Okay. I don't even. I don't even keep up with Facebook because I'd rather live my life. I don't have too much left. I wouldn't think. You know, um, rather than write about it. You know. So um, cool. it, it's okay. So now, um, just looking at here at the big picture. And I just pick up very, very gently, just lifting. I've, I've cut through, I've cut through already, and I just clean up that edge, let it fall, let it fall, let's see what happened. Give it a little bit of pointing. I can take it down in a moment if I want. Let the hair fall down naturally, and then just clean up, no, no pressure, no tension around the ears. I have another question here from Mark Haywood. Are there any benefits from working one side of the haircut first before moving onto the other side compared by working symmetrically across the back? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. I think, you know, um, 
I'm doing it this way. I wouldn't, you know, how, what can I say? I mean, most of the haircuts that I do, um, now I don't do a lot of cutting, but most of the, I actually start at the sides. Um, I actually don't start in the back because for me it's very logical as you're working to the face and to the whole person to start as close to the front as for, uh, and it changes your whole cut as to where you should start. But I actually, I actually when I'm working, I don't work in such a mechanical way. But the, the importance of tonight for me was to share um, a fundamental understanding of a shape on how and how you did it. And so, you know, I've tried to approach it in a very logical way. Um, you know, a few years ago, I, I had the honor um, to work on, on a book um, with Daryl Benson and Flint Wincrop. I mean, they did, they did all the work for it. I mean, I just came in and and, and put it together and, 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 and covered, you know, stuff that we needed to do. But um, I would say to you that that book, it, in my opinion, I mean, I, I'm, it's no effrontery to anybody else who's done it, but I think it's the best book that I, I've ever seen. What's the book called? It's called Cutting Hair the Vida Sassoon Way. Um, I don't know whether or not, th this cut is shown in there, okay? I don't know, and I'm saying that because anybody who's lucky enough to get their hands on one of those books, do it, because it will be a it will be a fantastic investment for you, um, for your for for your for your career, really a fantastic because because it's very important to work as a team, you you know I mean I'm a one man band I mean, you know I'm, you know but 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 it's it's really important to work as a team and you can share. Now look at, look at this, I mean, look, just look at what needs to, to come off here. Now because I over-direct forward, over-direct backwards rather, slightly, walking my fingers forwards as I told you in the beginning, then it just leaves this lovely soft graduated wave. And then when we look in the mirror again, there's, there's bits and bobs to, to clean up of course, but then when we look in the mirror again, you know, we're getting, we're getting this lovely shape. And now we've only got the, the top bit to do. And this is where I am going to, um, my meerkat will be just a little bit different from, from the cut that Daryl did in, in, um, in, in, in Cutting Hair with Vidal Sassoon way. Um, because he was showing he was showing uh, what needed to be shown, the fundamental shapes and all that. Okay, um, but what I like to do with with the crown, um, again, because we're doing we're work, working square, we have to work from the crown forward. Okay, as opposed to if you're rounding it off and then you work the other way around. But what I like to do is to work from the crown because everybody's crowns. Is different, and you can see Mia's hair here. That this determines what I need to do. So, I'm, my first section, say we take over like that, which which we which we call. It doesn't matter if it's the A or the C section. It's, we've got A, B, and C, whatever. This will be the first section, the middle section, A, B anyway, and the last one, C, whatever. So, we've done the sides, we've done the back. We're looking at the crown. And this section here, what I like to do, he, what he did in the book was that he cut horizontal. Now, personally, um, I've never liked doing that because um, I'm slightly over-directing the hair forward, but I don't like doing that. It's too committal. If you get that wrong, that, that first section, you know, if you cut it too short, you're stuffed. But by, but by cutting it horizontally, like I am, like I cut the back, uh, I haven't seen the book for a long time, but I believe that's the case. You know, just very, very slightly <coughs> over-directed forward. And of course, what I'm doing here is I'm working 
over like that. I'm just I'm working around here. So there's a bit of roundness to this to this um, to this top section as well. It's not totally square, but it it is it is based on a square on a square line. See, it's very slightly angled forward. So I, that's why I like to cut. I like to cut with these horizontal sections, with these sections going forward like that across the top. Um, whereas he, it, I believe in the book, I believe what he showed yeah, was that, which was the classic <coughs> way. Oh yeah, he, he, see, you remember. Chris, <laughs> could I, um, yes. I've got a lot of people asking me questions and yeah. they're going to be upset me if I don't ask you them. Yeah. So I've got a few questions to ask you. Yes. Uh, the first one is from Ronell and it says, Christopher, what was your most favourite haircut of all time? Well, you know... Um, Hard question, huh? Well, uh, of course, my most favourite ha haircut of all time is something I did. You know, um, but, my, but my goodness... Which one was that? Have I seen, have I seen, have I seen some fantastic haircuts? I, I would say... I'd say to you that to create... I think that most hair designers, it, this, is a, this is a crazy thing to say, but most hair designers go through, through life not having created, um, you know, a, a haircut, um, you know, that has had, has had massive international um, effect, okay? Um, it, it, it's very, very rare to create um, a haircut. Um, and, and for me, it is the best feeling in the world. It's better than sex, it's better than eating, it's better than anything. I mean, I'm serious. I'm serious. It is. Okay. Um, but, you know, I mean, look, hey, if you ask me that question, you know, apart from the five point, uh, apart from the asymmet asymmetric Vidal done, apart from Roger Isadora, um, I hope my brush would stand favourably uh, in that company. I, I, I hope so. The, the Firefly was, 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 a, was I, 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 in my opinion, with, with modern cutting and everything, it, it, it was the most important cut of, of the 70s. Um, because so many things came from that. You know, the, the, the wedge, um, you know, so... Uh, the, uh, Firefly to um, Herter's, Herter's Swallow, so many fantastic cuts came from it. Um, but but I, 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 you know, I am, I'm, I mean, when he asked me that, I'm so sorry, uh, you know, I am prejudiced because I, I am a rebel, you know, I, I am. And, and, and the brush, was five years before any any punk style had ever been seen. Nobody had ever seen hair standing up. Rod Stewart didn't have hair standing up before the brush, or or any of them. How did you um, work it, it? It all came from that. What? How did you work it? How did I work it? That's a great story. Uh, how did I work it? I mean, to, you mean to say what actually happened? Um, you know, e even now, even now, I have ideas in my heart. Which I've never been able to do, um, and um, I carry them around, you know, forever. And I just pray that, you know, one day I'm going to get get the opportunity to do something. Um, but I I had I, I had seen um, I had seen a brush, a shaving brush in in, in a window, and and you know I'm a young hair hair cutter and looking at this brush in, in the window and, and the texture of it and all that. And I thought, you know, how, wouldn't it be great to do that with hair and, 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 and what have you. And, um, and I, I had the idea literally in my heart for about five years before I was able to do it. Um, and then one day I got, I, I was like, I was the Vogue hairdresser um, in London and in Paris for about 10 years. And, um, and so they phoned me up and they said, we've got this lo lovely little French girl in, in here. Nobody can do anything with her hair. We, would you have a look at her? She's in tears. And she came out over to see me and 
Our hair was knackered. It was, it was, it was, you couldn't do, you couldn't do anything with it. It was, it was terrible. And to me, it was a gift of heaven. Yeah. Because, A, I've, I, I, ever since the, ever since the Greek goddess, I, I, I wanted to do round, round graduation, round layering. It was a precursor of the firefly and things like that. Yeah. And, and so, um, here, I mustn't forget my beautiful client here while we're talking about this. And so I, you know, I, I got this knackered hair, which you couldn't do anything with, which stood out, and I cut, I cut this beautiful dandelion shape on it. And um, of course there were no products to help it, because the roots and what have you. So I had to cheat a bit. I had to put a little bit of candle wax around the roots. Cause the, the, well, the thing is, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd use a knife and fork if I, if, if I have to. I love the textures that that, that ha happening here, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I have to say to you that even still today, and I, and I don't want to insult anybody or anything, but I've never been happy with, with, with the pro products that professionals can use. I've, I've never, ever been happy about that, you know, my, my, it's been a whole lifetime, um, you know, and, and you kind of use the best you can, you know, you, you use, you know, the black and the white and, you know, and what have you, but it's, it doesn't sit well with me. So now, look, I'm cross-checking this, I'm, I'm just cross-checking now, I've been chatting away, um, but I hope that you found that quite interesting. Definitely. You know, the thing is, with hair design, um, you know, you learn these things, you know, A, B and C and cutting in this way and what have you, um, and it's very, very difficult then to break the habit. Sometimes you've got to be, be prepared to free fall, okay, and you've got to do things that if we don't do that, if we don't do that with our business as well as with the hair, then we're going to be dead. I think this is one of the problems, you know, that we have today. Um, you've got to be prepared to free fall. And that free fall, you know, I mean, to give you an example of that, you know, I could, I could do this haircut, you know, a variation of this haircut for the Greek goddess and what have you. But in those days, we'd all set the hair up and, you know, talk to certain, do it in the Vidal way and what have you. And this is what we did. And we, trying to get Vidal, this was the last look, the, the Greek, Greek goddess, that Vidal was actively involved in from, from a hair design, okay? And what he did, he, 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 he not long before um, set up the business in, um, in, in um, America, and he came back and he said, there are these fantastic looking black women there, they're, they're fantastic looking, you know, and, and you know, when they've got short hair and what have you, um, it would be great if we could do something like that on Caucasian hair. And so, um, you know, we all looked at him and, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and uh, so, you know, so what's this, what's this going to look like? Sort of like Greek sort of heads. I took myself off straight away to the V&A Museum in London and I'm walking around these 3,000 year old statues looking at them and, and stuff like that, fantastic, you know, letting the culture rub off. And I uh, came back and we literally locked ourselves in the Grosvenor house because we had like a private room that we could, the photographer, um, Vidal, um, Gerald Austin, I think it was then, I believe it was then, and certainly Roger Thompson and I doing the cutting, Andy Humphreys, Claire Hamilton doing the colour perming. And, um, and so maybe Alison, was, was there for that. I'm not sure if she, if she was then, um, doing the perming then as well. So anyway, um, we did the cuts and what have you, and I finished the hair as, you know, I, as I'd learned, you know, in the, in the Sassoon way, right? But, it, uh, but, but Roger, it, 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 we were locked in. We literally, we didn't go home. We slept in the salon for two nights. Um, we had the, we, you know, we weren't going to leave until we got this down, right? So we had to because the collections were going to come along. And, uh, and so, you know, we're struggling along, Roger and I, you know, 
we both could cut hair, he, he was better than me, and he was always better than me. And um, we're working with the hair, and I didn't work with it, I, I worked it with it in the old way that I'd been, been shown. But Roger, he just worked with the hair, he, he could just work with the hair. And it happened, you know, it was like, it was, that's what I call free falling. That was that was absolutely revolutionary, and and you to to, to do that with hair in those days because you've got to remember everybody was setting so and and it was an enormous success. I mean, it made fortunes for the permit companies, and not for us, um, not for Roger and I didn't. Um, but you know, but you know, a lot of the pictures that was used with my cuts as well. Um, I think actually, I think my cat actually looked stronger, but but the but the concept was Rogers. You know, he actually he he actually did that. So I've got to now do the last nothings, the last little section in here, and see what's going on here. So, what, how, how are you feeling, Amelia, so far? Yes. About, is it all right? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to. I did have a. I did have a little brush. I don't know what I've done with it. A neck brush? No, no, not a neck brush, um, but just a little Denman brush. Mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, um, Chris, I've got another question for you, just yeah. want to get in your brush for you. Yeah. Uh, this is from uh, Seema Stewart, and he says, and this is an interesting question because I remember having a conversation myself with you about certain, certain discussions in, yeah. in regards to tools. And um, the question is, can you ask him uh, what his thoughts on thinning scissors are? Personally, I'm not a fan. Just wondering if he finds them beneficial. Okay, when you say you're not a fan, the, the gentleman yeah, that's asking this. asking you yeah. a question. Well, you know, um, thinning scissors, the French called them escalopes. Um, Sorry. I, I, I've shown you pointing. Okay, I've shown you pointing. I've, I've explained how my preference is to, is to work as much with my hands as possible. I've got personally um, more control um, with, my, with my little pair of scissors and, and, and that kind of thing than, than using uh, thinning scissors. I, that's my personal uh, preference. Um, it's, I mean, if they use, if they use correctly, which is slightly at an angle, so you don't get toothbrushing. Okay, you know, but you've still got a line. You've still got a line in, you know, you're, you're putting in into the hair. Whereas, whereas with the scissors, you don't have to have a line. Um, so, you know, that that's my personal preference here. Now, I'm looking, you know, at the bone structure. C could I have a, um, a little towel? to take the hair off the face. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. You, it's, you know, when I was working, I mean, um, yeah, I know it's very different now, the economics and, and all the rest of it. Um, perhaps uh, my, my ideas, if Suki Law, my friend in, in China who's just opened a salon in Shanghai, um, sees this, and he, you know, they might have different possibilities there, but it, we always used to work with assistants, and um, the hair wouldn't fall on the client's face. Um, just taking the ends off very, very gently here. Um, I want to get the, the feel of this, of this right. Just coming up. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Please? So now, see, I point down. What's that, John? How do you decide what kind of choice of length in the front? How do you. How okay, do you, well, this, this is what I was talking to you about the feeling. You know, it's. It, to cut hair, well, you've got, you've got to have the art in you. You know, and so. You, 
you just feel it. It's like it, 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 it is a gift that you look at the, the face and you, you know you, you can see. Sometimes, sometimes um, when you're developing an idea of how, or what have you, um, it's really great to have a friend with you, like Johnny here, like you know Sandy, um, and uh, you know I remember when I did. What do, what do they call it? I did it on Scromalia anyway. I mean, um, it, it was it was it was a theme of circles. I did a higher circle and a lower circle. And to be honest with you, I don't think I'd have seen that on my own. But Herta Keller was standing behind me, standing on my shoulder while I was doing the haircut, and she said, and she said to me, you know, Chris, you know, that would work well. But a little higher, you know, and, and, we, and we were, you know, I've got her to thank, thank for that when I did that. So to have the trust of working with somebody else, it, you know, it's very important. It's very important in a salon or in a business to have alliances, to have somebody you can trust, you know. Um, it, it's a very, very precious thing, that. You know, I had it with Roger. Um, uh, you know, I was, I, was re I was always happy, you know, working with, with Roger. We, we, never, we never were in competition, he and I. Um, thank you. I don't know what, what happened to my, my, uh, my little clippy thing. Um, I'm, what I'm actually doing is I am actually doing this thing of, of, of a theme of circles. Here, I might just take it away, but I'm starting off like that. I'm just starting off like that. And then I can, I can go from there. Okay, so, so now, you see this last section, which I said would be pulled forward. This is being pulled forward a lot at the moment, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be pulled forward that much when I, when I finish. This is just to give me the fill. So it, 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 it's a very, very flattering line. And when the hair is brushed around, so you've got, you've got a slightly higher circle and a slightly lower circle. So it's going up here, it's lifting the face. It's like a bloody, you know, um, facelift. It's fantastic without, without the, without the uh, surgery. So, yeah, so. Um, can, I, can I say something, Chris? Yeah. I can genuinely say, and I'm pretty sure everybody in the room, and I know it by the looks of what everyone's writing here, mm. um, you can't see what everybody's writing here, but there's no, well, nothing... No, I hope it's no too there's horrible. <laughs> there's nothing yeah. but love here, but yeah. what I think is really coming through, coming through to everybody, uh, me included, um, is your genuine passion for what you're doing. It well, comes from the You know, I, I, absolutely. And everybody no, here is no, commenting on no, that. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, it's... It's an extraordinary thing, really, that um, that at 74, you know, I, I, I st this is my first love. I mean, you know, and and that it, you know, and that it can be like that. And our and our industry, as well, you know, it, it, that is my passion. And when, and when I see things not being quite right, it upsets me. You know. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm really glad, because there are lots of very, very good cutters out there. Um, you know, and to have a little bit of thought about something like that. You know, tomorrow they're going to the salon. People are saying they're going to, they're going to go in tomorrow and they can't wait to cut hair. That's what they're saying here. They're what? People on here are saying they can't, they can't wait to no. go to work tomorrow. Yeah, no, that's so right. You give them energy no, and they want to Well, that's, that, that, but look, the, the thing is, I don't want to lead anybody up the garden path, okay? This is, as I've said, this, this is an art form, but, and art, real art, is never a bowl of cherries, okay? There is, it's not easy for any of you, whether you be an individual, in the inner salon, or, or a company, or whatever it is, it's not easy, and it's taken years you know, to, to, to develop your own personal techniques and this, and, you, and we need to work together as a craft to do that. Can I, I've got uh, two yeah. questions to ask you, if that's okay. 
Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, one is from someone called uh, Johan Ross. Yeah. It says, Chris, it is so great to hear what your experience in hairdressing is. What would you say is the next boundary to break? Well, I, well, I, I, I think there's some very, um, it, there are some very big hurdles to cross. I think that personally, I think sometimes the relationship between, you know, I mean, people are going to think it's really pretentious when I talk about art and hair, but that's what I believe. I believe hair is an art form when it's done properly. But sometimes, um, but business is really very important part of that. And sometimes the business goes leaping ahead and sometimes the art goes le leaping ahead. We need right now as much creativity in business as we do in art. You know, we, we, we have to, we, we do, do you like the way this is coming? <laughs> That's coming. Okay. Yeah, okay, you, 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 you're, you're smashing, so. But, um, yes, thank you very much. There's another question here for you. Well, I mean, normally, you know, when I work, I, I don't talk much. Um, I used to have assistants who were like my entertainment directors. To, you know, they, they, would, they would keep the... Because, really, all of my energy, all of my... Was, was in the haircut. You know, so... Um, you know, it wasn't that I didn't like people or anything like that, um, but I just, that was it, so. So I've got a question here for, for, uh, for you. Um, it's from a Latin Gura, Gura Slam. Sorry if I've said your name wrong. I do apologise, please forgive me. It says, can you ask Chris about fringe tips, please? Thank you. Fringe tips? Yeah. Well, I just gave you quite a big fringe tip. I'd say fringe tips is to... Um, is to cut the the all parts of hair, but particularly the hair around the face, um, to the client's bone structure. L look at the bone structure, and and just do what you think is right for it. Okay, there'll be something inside of you that will tell you what is right for that client. But there are some fundamental rules. Okay, there are fundamental rules. For example, and you know, it's not generally done. It's like, you know, this is for men and for women. But, I mean, if you... Like Mel Melody, I mean, she's she's gorgeous-looking lady. Um, you know, but her face... Her face is not round. It's not square. It's not particularly long. Um, but to... To cut the front like this, as I am soft, softly th through, through the front, like this. It's just putting all the emphasis on her, on her best features. I mean, all the features are good, you know, but on her eyes and on, on her lips, on her bone structure. It's just, you know, it's just bringing, it's bringing, it's bringing it all out. So, you know, uh, I'd say, look at the, the client's face. Learn some fundamental things, okay, um, like what I said about about the crown. I mean, you see this crown is lifting up nicely. Um, but, you know, for example, if, if Melody's face was, say, if she had a square jaw, okay, then my, my, my advice to you would be to show, if she had a square jaw, would be to show as, as much of the face as possible. If you put uh, somebody a fringe, heavy fringe, on somebody with a square jaw, it's going to make them look like a hamster. You know, so, I mean, you know, so you've got to just know these fundamental things. A good, very good tip, a really good tip for everybody, because I think nature gives us clues with individuals, right? And very often, when I look, if I'm put, deciding where I'm going to put a party or something like that, I look at the client's face, and generally, it's around the high point of the eyebrow. Now, everybody's eyebrows are different. There's some a bit lower, some a bit higher, but it kind of works for the client. And that can work as well if you're doing a layered haircut or a fringe or, or something like that. That is a very good tip, that you remember that. Just, just a little thing like that. 
Um, you know, if you're not too sure what sort of haircut to put or what sort of fringe to put on a, on a certain client, you know, just look at their face and 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 see like, you know, that that's that's that is a good tip. I, I would I would have I would really like I mean just to have put a, a bit a bit of colour through it because she's still a little bit dry um, up there and I've got too much weight on this corner. So okay, so how can I get rid of that? So let's see. Let's just go back. I I I have I've cut it forward like I showed you. I've actually cross-checked it already and there's still too much weight there. So I'm just taking a bit more out. I've got two questions for you, Chris. Yeah. This one's from Sarah O'Connor. Yeah. It says, I've always been taught to keep moisture content in the hair. Okay. Is it best to let the hair dry while cutting or to spray it down and keep it down? Okay, that's a, a, another really another really good question. Okay, um, it's very important. With I, I like I actually like when I'm working. I, I'm not explaining and, and, and every section going on like that. And I actually like to just work with the hair. And I work sufficiently fast enough and have the flow so that by the time I've finished, it's normally. Almost dry. I don't. I don't even. I don't even have a hair dryer. I mean, you know. I mean, I worked a couple of years ago. I went, um, and they were very kind to to let me work in um, the Aveda um, um, uh, school in in Minneapolis, and uh, and they were showing me all these products, and they couldn't believe it because I didn't. I don't use that. You know. I just don't use that all that stuff. You know. And um, they just couldn't believe it. But, but, but you know, the thing is, it's like music. You know, it's not just the notes that are played. It is the pauses between the notes which are even more important. That is part of the sound. So the way that you finish the hair, I mean, it's other people. I mean, they're really good at doing the ironing. I was never very good at doing the ironing. And, and so, you know... I just didn't do that, but I actually, I actually like just to work the hair um, until it, 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 it's almost dried naturally or the shape's there. But this question, to go back specifically, I would say to you, it's very, very important as a fundamental rule to, um, to work with the same tension and therefore the same porosity of the hair, the dampness throughout the haircut because that can affect the, 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 the layering or the graduation. So I don't know if that, that makes sense yeah, to you. No. But so I, I you know so, so specifically on that that's a very important point. Yeah. Yeah. And and the combs. I mean you don't wouldn't think that a comb is particularly important with cutting. I I find it very important. Um, and because that's also part of the tension that you put on a haircut. Two more um, questions here for you, Chris. You, you know, I would say to you, I would say to you, and I, I'm, I hope I'm not, I know, I know in this salon with Johnny and his team that they will check over Melody's hair and they will, they will take it to another whole level. I, I want them to do that because for me, when I cut hair, um, when I put a new shape in hair, I always find that it takes me a couple of cuts to fit it to the client, you know, and then, um, and then it's, you know, I, I want it to be amazing, and it will be amazing, um, you know, when that's done. So it, you know, so, but but I do like, I mean, you know, it's the, the the old Mirka, I mean, it's it, it's great. See this here, I I the way that I cut through that and that's just appeared I mean you know now I over direct back to the line and I just clean it up I take it forward there's a little bit more over the ear as you can see a little bit of weight there I would just go on refining it and refining it but I can't do that but I think you've got the gist of it and I really hope I really, really hope that you um, 
you know, that you are going to take, that this will be useful to everybody and, you know, you take this on board. Um, because it, I tell you, with this haircut, you could, you could take it to another whole level now. Um, you know, this is the basis. This is where I would start. And, and, you know, if I was working in Johnny's salon, this would be a picture. This would be a picture. This would be a new idea. Okay, now you can say, well, how can that be a new idea? It's a basic haircut. But this is the basis for a new idea. You know, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you that. That is for you. I don't, I, I don't do that. That is for you to do. That is, that is your job, to, to make this into that. But, you know, I, I, I've, given you, I've given you bread and butter here, and uh, I hope so, and a bit of jam. <laughs> I hope so. Chris, yeah. I've got two questions that I, I definitely need to ask you. Okay. Two really nice questions. The first one is from uh, Gina Manasi, Manasfi. It says, if all women had short hair, do you think women, uh, short hair on women is better than long hair on women? How do you feel about that? Of course, um, you, you can't generalise. But I, I will say to you what Peggy Moffat said to me. Okay, okay. Peggy Moffat, famous Peggy Moffat. Um, she, she said to me once, you know, um, that a lady wearing a sailor costume, a man's sailor costume, she looks more feminine than, you know, some lady who's wearing, or the same lady, wearing all this lady stuff. It, it sort of brings out the femininity of people. And this is what people don't realise. They, with people in, in the West, I mean, particularly, I mean, Barbie, Barbie and Ken have got a lot to answer for. They have. If it was me, if it was me, I, 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 I would, you know, I'd have Barbies like, like Peggy Moffat, you know, um, but they're misguided. And particularly, I mean, this isn't just for old ladies or anything like that, but particularly when you're not 18 anymore and, you, and, you're, and you're a lady, you know, it is terrible. It is so terrible, you know, that they, that they don't do anything with their hair. It, it, you know, it, 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 it's really sad. That's why I said to you, that's why I said to you about the six shoe salesman right in the beginning, do you remember? Uh, you know, because they're not doing it. You know, and you, you have a great haircut. You've got, to, you've got to feel like that. But I can tell you, you know, the majority of people, and I'm not being critical, not everyone's got a short hair, you know, but, but certainly, when you're not 18 anymore, you've got to be really, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's alarming. It's alarming. I mean, the, 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 the search for, for youth, um, and it just gets worse and worse. You know. I've got, uh, I've got a haircut here. Uh, it's the same with guys. I've got a question here yeah. for you, uh, Chris. From Do you like it? <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's everything. That's everything, really. I mean, you, you are an angel. I mean... I've got a question here from Simon Pundell. But this lot, this inner salon, well, they are, they're going to do wonderful, we'll wonderful yeah. things with you. They will, they will, they'll take this, they take this to a new level. You know, I, I have, I think, I think it's 100% better. I mean, that's all you can do. But, you know, but I, I just know, I mean, you know, and, and particularly if you work with a little, little bit of colour in it as well. Um, that, that would be great. So this question is from Simon Ponte. It says, please ask Christopher on behalf of me and Paola, or Paola and myself, what has been his most memorable moment in hairdressing? Well, you know, um, God. It's a hard one, huh? It's, um, I've, I've had, I've had many, 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 many memorable moments. I think, I think this is a memorable moment because, you know, I'm here with you. Now, here and now. That's always the thing. But, but, but um, I've had some incredible um, experiences and worked with really incredible people, you know, from, from, from the beginning. And to, to name, not, 
to name even some of them would be a disservice because really I, I won't let you know, out. Uh, absolutely, yeah, Abs absolutely. Yeah, yeah, but but you know, so, yeah. I mean, I, I, I just I love to see the texture that like when you do when you do a, when you do something like this. I mean, it's. But Johnny, you 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 get the melody in soon and very soon, and and. You know, we'll and clean this up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So just, but you know, the, the important thing tonight was to show, um, was to show this, um, this, 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 this. Um, yeah. There's a question here from uh, Paula, and she says, "Firstly, Christopher, you look great for 74." Well, it's very kind. Can I very ask, kind. when did you first know you wanted to be a hairdresser? Uh, well, you know, um, the thing is, uh, I've always been a rebel, and um, and really quite political because I I I always hated the class system. I loathed it, you know, my whole life. And um, my my parents were companies, working class people, and they, you know, they they did the best they could for me and sent me to to a good school and what have you. And, and I was the head boy in that school. And uh, it, it was a fancy school. I mean, you know, so they paid for me to go there. And it was a big deal for my, for my parents to do something like that. And um, they came from very close to here, actually. And um, anyway, so the time came at the end when I would be, um, needed to find a job. I was about 16 or 17. And, um, they said, well, what do you want to do? I was a head boy at the school. I said, well, you know, I, at first I decided I was going to go in the RAF because I had an uncle in the RAF who I loved. He was a great guy and he died. And I thought, well, this has got nothing to do with me. I don't want to kill anybody. You know, this has got nothing. And, and I've always been a rebel, so that wouldn't be a good idea. So I didn't know what to do. I, I, maybe there was a film blow up or something. And about this photographer, and I said, "Well, I'll be a photographer." I had no idea. I was sixteen or seventeen, and uh, and my dad said, "No, you're not going to." My dad was an engineer, and he said, "No, you're not going to be a photographer." I don't know why he said that, but he said, "No, you're not." So, oh dear, I I, I, I had no idea. So the school said. Um, you know, we'll get you a, we'll get you a job in local government. They're going to take me up there. I said, no, don't think so. You know, that's not, that's not my scene. Um, but they were really concerned about their image because, you know, they had paid people coming from overseas and this country and what have you. And I was a boy, and the name was on the board. And, uh, and so um, I said, I'm not going to do that. And so they said, well, what are you going to do? So I said, I'll be a hairdresser. So they all freaked. They, they, I mean, you know, you, you, you can't be a hairdresser. You know, you're going to this posh little school in Dulwich. Um, you know, you can't do that. So I said, well, you know, when they did that, I could see the snobbery. And I said, no, that's what I'm going to do. So. They said, we're going to take you to the, um, to, to, to the civil service. I said, I'm not going. And so, you know, I mean, I'm very soft-spoken, but I, you know, I have always been a rebel. It's, uh, people do find it difficult, even in our industry, to work with me because I'm very stubborn. So, um, so anyway, the, the upshot of this was that they agreed, they all agreed, including my dad, because my dad said, well, scornfully, he said, well, you know, well, the heaviest thing you pick up is a, is a hairpin. Because he used to pick up tree trunks in his job. Um, you know, and, he, and he worked, and he lost all the tops of his fingers. You know, I mean, they all lost the tops of their fingers in, the, in that business. You know, they were tough guys. He'd come back laughing about it. And unbelievable. I've got, I've got a cut finger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I mean, I think of my dad. You know, um, and so they, the only way they gave in, gave into it was 
that, that I would go to a technical college, uh, you know, because then they could say, well, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't doing, he wasn't going to be a hairdresser, he's going to a technical college. And then I went into this technical college, and um, one last story for you, okay. Um, I went into this technical college, and of course, there are these old guys in this technical college who've been made their hairdressers, probably in the 20s or, or something like that. And they're, you know, they're there, and they think, you know, they worked in good salons before they got too old, and when they got too old, they talk. So, um, so I did that, and I went through the thing. And in those days, they were doing the cities and girls, and and, um, and they give you a result at the end of the year. After two years, they gave you a result of where you came. And if you came any well in the country, they mention it. So, my friend Simon Chassid, who was my friend there, one of my friends there. He came first in ladies. He worked at Dumont, where all the best hair, hair dresses came from, including the Dow. Um, in, Michael was? John took over the shop in Albemarle Street. What was it originally called? Sorry. It was called Dumont. That was where all the best hair. Head, head, I mean, Roger Thompson didn't go to come from Dumont, but people who taught Roger Thompson came from Dumont. Everybody came from Dumont, and Dumont was really on the last knocking stone. But they were still teaching great hairdressing skills, and so Simon Chassid. Um, you know, was tall, this pink hair and stuff. And all that. I mean, he came first in the country in, in ladies. And, and I came second in the country in ladies after two years, right? But in barbering, I came first in the country. I wanted it to be the other way around. I was really disappointed, so I wanted to be Simon Chassid, you know, very competitive. But, you know, the thing was, that's what I am. You know, I am no, you know, for me, hairdressing is a very old-fashioned term. I left that behind in the 60s. Um, I'm really like a lady's barber. You know, that, that's what I am. I, you know, I cut, I cut hair. I finish it naturally. Um, you know, that's it. So I hope that answered yeah, that, that question a bit. But it's, you know, it's, it's so, a lot of my lines, when you look at on Pinterest, which and things. Ask yourself why. Why why do you do that? Maybe we meet again and I can tell you some more reasons because you'll have your own reasons as to what you do. And I want you all to aim to create um, your own haircuts. That's that's the key thing. This this can be part of it anyway. Thank you so much. You've been really wonderful. And I'm really sorry that the old hands don't work as good as they used to. Excuse me. So basically, you can't see where it was in writing. But they've been saying some really incredible things to you. Well, and uh, very, lots of thank you, lots of, uh, you know, yeah. an amazing legend. I, thank I, you so I, much I for do, your I time. I do hope they can use it. I do. They will. They definitely, really definitely, hope definitely, they definitely will. Definitely will. Take it on. So, um, Thanks for the guys, thank you. we're going to say thank you to Chris again one more time. No, no, no. no thank you for tuning in. <laughs> um, thank you for your questions. <laughs> And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Chris. Jonathan.